All right, so um, I'm just going to show uh, just a really quick um, uh, demonstration of DCBI SCSI as it runs um, from uh, server to storage. And just looking at the topology that we're running, we have two hosts connected to one switch. One of them is running iSCSI traffic, the DCBI SCSI traffic. The other one's just running network traffic, which we're going to inject to to apply the congestion and show how DCBI SCSI will be set to one priority and enforced to its own bandwidth. And then the network traffic, which is going to send across to another server on the other side, is going to be running on its own priority and enforced to its own bandwidth. And what this shows is that network traffic and iSCSI traffic can run on um, within the environment without one bogging down the other. Yeah. Well, this what this does is that you can control the the bandwidth of each of the the different traffic. So I can set ninety percent network traffic, ten percent iSCSI, or I can set forty percent in this case, forty percent iSCSI, DCB iSCSI, and sixty percent LAN on the same link within the network, and that bandwidth will be guaranteed. Another mechanism within DCB is that you have priority flow control, so you can set up a lossless ethernet on one priority, pause that traffic without impacting any of the other flows. So if I have network traffic on uh, the LAN priority, if that gets congested, we'll drop the frames. But with the DCBI SCSI, we can pause the traffic without dropping any frames. So to to show, to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start iSCSI traffic on the server that's set up with iSCSI. Uh, we'll take a look at the bandwidth utilization and see that frames are flowing just on a single priority. In this case, it's going to be priority four, which is kind of the accepted for DCB iSCSI. Um, and then we'll take a look at the bandwidth on the storage port as well as the ISL. Then I'm going to start up the network traffic. I'm going to use uh, NetPerf, uh, run that across, which will essentially try to bog down the link at 100%, but ETS is going to kick in on that ISL and enforce only 60%. And the way that we're going to observe that is we're going to take a look at the storage port. And on the storage port, we can go back to the, the diagram. On the storage port, initially it's going to be running at a, much, a pretty high utilization. And then when the network traffic kicks in and ETS is uh, enforced here, this is going to go down to the ETS bandwidth allocated for iSCSI. So we're going to take a look at that interface to see that only that percentage of iSCSI traffic is traversed. And then after, the network traffic is going to stop. And then we'll see that the iSCSI traffic is going to go back to its original uh, bandwidth utilization. Okay. So I'm using iometer to generate the traffic. Start that up. No iometer. Hmm? No iometer. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, each one of the servers has a CNA, has a brocade CNA. So all three of them have brocade CNAs. The CNA uh, takes the DCB configurations parameters and um, allocates them based on the, the switch's configuration. So the switch will push out the DCB priority settings, the DCB settings to each of the CNAs, and then they'll um, run with that DCB configuration. CNAs? Um, well, any CNA that's that's it's configured. It's DCBX. So DCBX is the, is the transfer protocol that basically allows you to go, hi, I speak DCB, and you go, oh, me too, and this is how we do it. So. 
Okay, as long as as long as everyone's now you will run the situation where one person having a slightly different version of the person to someone else. But for the most part, it should just work. Yeah. Is it is it possible to allocate iSCSI traffic to a lossless lane? Yes, and that's actually, that, that is what we have configured. So yeah. we, we set it up with PFC, uh, similar to what we would do with FCOE or any other losses priority that we want. So um, what kind of target can handle doing that? That's always been the problem. So, right. you, can, you can throw the packets into a lossless lane, but then what? So it's the same, it's mm -hmm. the same idea of DCBX, right? So basically, if, if the array says it supports DCBX, then essentially you can set up these policies, the PFC and the ETS and so forth. Now, it is a little bit confusing because, um, in another example of, of marketing in action, uh, a lot of people call it, call it iSCSI TLB, um, which is unfortunately a little confusing because TLB is for type length value. So it's kind of like calling it a miles per hour car. Um, it, uh, it, it, to say that it is, uh, you know, TLB is not to say that, it, that you are, you know, definitely getting those policies, but that's essentially what you're saying. Is you, you basically, anyone that puts down iSCSI TLB is basically implying that you have access to PFC and ETS, so you can actually um, set up these policies. The, the link can be lost as okay. your controller is still the Sure. Yeah. So, so it's so, lost, it, it, so it's it will, lossless. It will kick out packets if they come in too fast. Mm -hmm. okay. it's the, you can never make it lossless throughout the network unless your controller is yeah. lossless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just lossless up to the yes. up to the exit and, port. And he won't queue. He won't queue. Do, do any controllers support it being lossless? Then? Yep. So what we have here is the uh, Equalogic. I so you right. Dell does DCB. with the Equalogic arrays. I mean, yes. it's 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 full DCB. So it, it is. I mean, it is lossless insofar as if all hell breaks loose, it'll send a pause frame and stop traffic before yeah. it'll lose a frame. Oh. So it is lossless. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, so it holds the queue. Yeah. I mean, it, there there are unfortunately the way DCB works today is it is a it is a reactive uh, method, a flow control method, as opposed to a proactive. So with uh, with Fiber Channel or ICE or um, InfiniBand or, or uh, FICO, uh, um, FICON, it's uh, buffers, right? So I have five and you say you I want six beers and I give you five beers and if you haven't said something, I don't give you the sixth beer, right? It's a play. Um, uh, in current implementations of DCB, it's more like a, 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 a spraying your face with a keg um, and then you yelling help when you've had too much. And so um, it should all work fine, but there are a few really high performance race conditions where essentially the controller can get in a state where it's so busy dealing with traffic that pause frames aren't really handled properly. Because and so the pause frame itself is only delivered on a best effort basis. So you can actually lose the pause and then exactly. not get paused. So yes. it is not lossless. It's, it's, it's almost it's, entirely it's, lossless. It's mostly yes. lossless. It's mostly lossless. It's Fresh, frozen. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The, the other, Virtually spotless. The other thing is you don't need DCB for pause. No. No. That's and, that's eight and yeah. the, the port on an iSCSI controller only does iSCSI. It doesn't have multiple yeah. priorities of traffic. Sure. Correct. So if it just says pause, then that will stop it from yeah. overrunning yeah. its buffers. Yeah, correct. But the okay. difference is that in this case, you're able to send that pause frame per priority queue. Right. right. So, which, which makes sense right. in the places where there's right. more than one protocol traffic. Now, the that challenge is, is, is that without, without um, some sort of end-to-end -end congestion model, right, you can run into multi-hop aggregation situations where sending a pause frame on one link pauses more than just the initiator you wanted to, right? Um, there is, you know, there are kind of... Um, fan in, fan out um, flow issues uh, without that end to end uh, monitoring. But keep in mind, I mean, you know, DCB, all the stuff, this is all still really new, right? I mean, this is, you know, uh, you know, most of these programs take, you know, 10 years to really kind of evolve. So there's still a lot of good work doing, going on. There's still a lot of progress being made and, and it will continue to improve. Because DCB is not just about storage, right? DCB is about, you know, you should really almost think of DCB as, as um, just next generation Ethernet, right? It's, it's about providing multiple services on a link. And this, this really is cutting edge stuff to have a, an array that supports DCB yep. with iSCSI. Yep. But yep. of course, the, the biggest problem with iSCSI is 
when you lose a frame. iSCSI works great until TCP has to step in and then you start having iSCSI problems. If, you can, if, if, if we can do iSCSI over TCP, suddenly iSCSI works really great. Yeah. Right. And so this is why this is cool stuff. It's, it's, it's a really good point because, I mean, certainly, um, you know, iSCSI, iSCSI TLD, um, over 10 gig is phenomenal. I mean, the performance is really outstanding, right? Um, you know, I mean, the, you know, the difference between that and say something like FCOE, you know, is there overhead? Yeah, there's a little bit of overhead, but it's, you know, it's not, you know, TCP, TCP IP is not the, the evil thing that some people make it out to be. Um, so, uh, Whoa, brocade guy. <laughs> <laughs> Data center guy. Yeah, yeah, okay. well, <laughs> but, yet, but yesterday we got the other story. Ah. Do you have a story for ATA over Ethernet? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do have a story for uh, fiber channel over token ring. Excellent. Oh, good. <laughs> we like that. <clears throat> yeah, and the, the Ecologic guys in their lab say that turning DCB on improves performance up to 15%. Who say that? Mm -hmm. Equalogic. Yeah. Right. It's, 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 I mean, ideally, I mean, we should get to the point, and, and honestly, it might take five years, right? But we should get to the point, especially once the end-to-end -end congestion management is finally working, that, you know, you can't buy an Ethernet port that doesn't offer DCB, right? I mean, every Ethernet port should eventually offer DCB, because it's good for, it's not just for storage, it's also good for video and, and, and phone, you know, it's, 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 uh, it's about, Multi-services. All right, just to, to continue so we can take a look at this, um, we see that um, we have only iSCSI traffic traversing uh, the switch and only traffic across the ISL is on priority four on both the link to the Ecologic Array as well as the ISL. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce some network traffic. And before I do that, one other detail to note is we see that storage port is running at about 80% of utilization across the ISL, actually. I mean, actually, in some cases, you'll actually see more benefit from going from 8B, 10B, the 6664, then you will see drop in TCP IP. Mm -hmm. In some cases, I mean, you're getting. I'm trying to be fair. <laughs> I, I'm sure there are. Yeah. More performance. Yeah, yeah, it's a big deal, right? I mean. For, versus 4% more overhead. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But what did somebody say about overhead? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and let's face it, overhead that provides routing and retransmission. You know, not not necessarily bad things. No, <laughs> not not useless stuff. Yeah. Okay, so what we have is, I've introduced the network traffic. What we can see is that the ISL has been fully utilized at 100%. We have now the network traffic running on priority zero. iSCSI traffic is still running on priority four. And if we look at links one and two, And I mean, as you can see today, certainly, especially, you know, just when you're going a short distance, uh, you know, the priority flow control and the, uh, the uh, transmission stuff works very well together, right? I mean, you have one saying, you know, hey, these are different lanes and you guys can go different speeds. And you have the other saying, hey, if there's no other cars, 
take the whole freeway. But if other cars show up, you got to you know step back and and you know give people their fair share. So it's it's a it's a, it's a very clean, uh, pretty reasonable way of doing it. So what we see is that this is the storage port, and the storage port is running at 40 percent, which is where the ISL throttled it down. So only iSCSI traffic is running at 40 percent, and that's what we see onto the storage port. And that showed that we were able to throttle the traffic back down to, to 40 percent when iSCSI was traversing the link. So just to reiterate based on the diagram, we saw that when we had full utilization of both the network traffic from these two hosts and iSCSI traffic going across, or the iSCSI going up to the target, this target only had 40% uh, bandwidth utilization because that was all that was allowed across the ISL. And that's where ETS comes in and enforces that bandwidth so that the network traffic, which would be running at 100%, doesn't bog down this link and kill my storage traffic. So the people that are calling you to yell at you about the storage performance can still get to you. <laughs> With I wish over you guys to do something about that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's another reason why something like iSCSI gets really interesting again, because essentially you are, that is one pipe, one priority for iSCSI, right? So if you have 16 different initiators talking to it, they're sharing the traffic, right? Now, if you're in a, uh, an L2 environment with something like, um, uh, you know, something like FCOE, it becomes a little more challenging to provide per initiator flow control, right? It's not impossible, it's just not quite as easy. So with something like NFS or iSCSI, you have the plethora of quality of service tools that are out there for IP that you can then use to throttle down further to make sure that those initiators or targets aren't, you know, feeding each other up. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thank you.